どうも初めましての方もお久しぶりの方もこんにちはシュアスつくもと申しますカナダトロントに来てもうすぐ3年になるところですがまだグダグダしております今回はフィクションとリアリティということでお題をいただきましたのでトロントに住むトランスジェンダーまたはノンバイナリーの人たち11人にインタビューをしてみましたノンバイナリーというのは日本でいう X ジェンダーのような意味で性別に言論に沿わない政治に思っている人という広い意味で使われており最近どんどん広まってきている言葉ですトロントの様子がどんなかを知ってインタビューを見たらまた違う印象になるかと思うのでいくらか挙げてみましたが時間がないので興味がある人は一時停止して読んでください What kind of body parts I have? A lot of times people don't take us seriously. So sometimes people think that we're just transitioning or、uh, talking about it for attention.、Uh, trans folks are sexual abusers and sexual predators. Folks who are trans or non binary may have been abused as children. Seen as something less than you are before. They treat you more like. Like you're female, like you're gonna be emotional or、really? anything, they go by stereotypes、mm-hmm. or they stop respecting you. I'm less mature because I dress in a masculine way. I think there is some assumption that a woman who is mature dresses in a feminine way. This assumption that trans people are added cost to the company and to the organization. There would be trans folks, for example, who decide to med- medically transition, even housing, right? I know a lot of trans people who don't have proper housing because. Landlords will tend to discriminate over、um, people who they can't figure out the gender. You know. All of us are sex workers, or we are all promiscuous. FTM to be a surgeon, like if I had said I was a guy and I was a man and I wanted people to understand me that way and live my life as a man, I, I feel like a lot of people, like my family, would accept that a lot more. Willingly and a, a lot more easily than they have accepted me being a non binary person. There's still a lot of difficulty and challenges around that. When a trans person transitions, they want to be very feminine or very masculine. They can't see people that want to just be in, in the middle and between.、Uh, and so for non binary people or、uh, gender queer people or even two spirit people, it can be very confusing for trans people. And then we become transphobic against our own people. Seeing like non binary people, like it's usually like it's usually a skinny person, it's usually a white person,、ah. and like they usually dress in like a masculine way. Uh, uh, the first thing I would do is when you, when you have a case of discrimination, is find out who your allies are、mm-hmm. and find out who your most powerful ally is. And I find that like I find it useful to hear from other people's experiences. You know, you can tell them, listen, I'm, I'm trying to. Fight this thing with my landlord, you know, should I just leave? Should I bring it to the tenant board? I spoke to a lawyer about this、uh, situation. We have already applied to the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. So it's always good to、uh, prepare yourself in a way that you will know how to react better eloquently than physically. But you have to be ready to fight too. <laughs> yeah! It's, for me, it's just p l a i n stubbornness. I don't want to let them win. Like, I just Google what I have to do. I, I find out what my rights are. File lawsuits. I fight it. And it works.、Um, because、um, when gender identity and gender expression were included in the Ontario Human Rights Code, right, right. it became the responsibility of the employer、mm. to make sure that workplaces were safe. Right. right? So many employers now come to us for training so that they can make sure that they're. Workplace is, is positive. And that, that's a major issue. Like, we need to be aware of these things if we're gonna, if we, if, for example, because if we don't, things are gonna be enforced on us that we don't know are wrong. And then, you know, we, we, we can't challenge something if we don't know that it's wrong.、Uh, there's also like social support, like community centers or other people that experience that, that could potentially help and guide somebody、uh, in the process of. Uh, you know, wanting to resist any discrimination they're experiencing so they don't have to leave their workplace or school. And I, I remember when I was in middle school, the, a whole bunch of clubs from the high school came over to my middle school. They were like, these are stuff that we offer. And I had heard about the GSA and I was like, 
that's a club that I'm gonna join. And this is like way before I even like identified as like any sort of queer at all. I thankfully went to a high school that talked about social justice. There was women's study or women history classes. Oh. There was you know um, black history classes, LGBTQ history. Um, and so I was glad that I had access to a lot of like non-binary um, community building things that was happening online. Like I was able to like find that letter to be like, this is a letter that I can give to my teachers to be like, please use my proper pronouns and my proper name. I don't recommend people to look for help or try to cry out for help through, through suicide um, because it's just not the right tool to, to use. There are other ways to communicate to your family uh, about how you're feeling. What you need to do is sit down and speak from the heart to your family, to your loved ones. Once the discrimination or the bullying is happening, it's already too late. Mm. Not that it can't be fixed, but I think that it needs to be like across the board, a whole environmental shift of this is the atmosphere we are creating, it is okay to be, this is a whole variety of different ways we value all of these different ways of being. Who are we to say what a man is? As I make them try to define what causes this idea in their head. And I'll try to find a logical, like if they can't come up with a logical reason, then they usually start to falter. Well, I, I definitely think that it's really hard to tell someone to be like, don't have any assumptions. <laughs> but that's honestly like the best way to try and go about it is like, try not to assume what people's experiences are. I would, I, I would hope that people who face discrimination can take care of themselves, whether that be through finding their own community. でも、こっちでは自分が傷つかない言ったとしても言ったとしてもなんかそういう In the tradition of many indigenous cultures, the square people have existed in the cultures ever since and that colonialism has killed those people. I would argue that being trans is just part of our culture. Uh, I, I feel like mental disorders are by definition a disconnect between the person and the society. Mm. I think that as human society, for instance, Western society has progressed, sometimes there's people who don't fit that society. So then we call them mental disorders. I was born male from the start. Just didn't have enough testosterone in my body. So I see it as just like a hormone <laughs> supplement. I don't see trans as who I am. It doesn't define me, it's just a part of me. Of course! Oh, of course. Really? Most of my life I believed uh, I was wrong. Um, I believed uh, that I was sick. Mm. It was a sin, it was a disease, it was, it was mental health issues. Um, it took me a long time to realize that I, I'm not the one crazy around here. You know, gender is something more spiritual, I think, than mental. And so, uh, and I, I also see the benefit of having a mental illness that needs to be cured or supported me medically. Mm -hmm. And that means for trans people, we get our surgeries covered. But that is very much just the way that I exist. I don't think that's a mental disorder at all. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to change the structure of society to be more inclusive of people of a whole bunch of different genders. We need to expand the ideas of genders. Gay or lesbian or whatever were also um, clinicalized and like made into this medical thing mm -hmm. um, like years ago. Trans stuff is like following behind. But there is a clear way to help someone, um, depending on how they feel, that they can always achieve satisfaction with themselves and with their identity. So at that point, um, I think that it's, it's quite different from a typical mental disorder. I believe strongly that um, these aspects of, of, of my genders um, are an expression of my spirituality. And I don't buy into the um, very Euro, 
European Christian concept of these binary genders. Just don't give up. You might feel like it's hopeless, but it's not. Maybe even if it doesn't work out for you, it might work out for someone else. Gather yourself and come up with a plan. Demand in writing, eloquently. Demand your rights as a person because you have rights. In Japan, they should see how the these legislations in in North America have developed over time and prove and having this thesis that, that to prove that if you don't provide care for trans people when they need it, it will greatly impact the society. I'm not 100% sure how binary genders work culturally in Japan. Understanding how these roles work, uh, being able to deconstruct them, and use that information and knowledge to keep fighting. Just because they're the ones that have all the power doesn't mean that they're right. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't fight or that they will win. No one can really take that away from you, even if it's not legally recognized or even if nobody else recognizes your gender um, and your other characteristics. It's super amazing to have like a lot of people in your life who like can be empathetic or, or empathetic to like your experiences. Um, just that they're loved and they have friends in Canada, friends and family who love them. And to keep fighting, keep creating their own stories because um, there is a way to win the fight and we know what it is. Well, just remember that like you're not alone, right? There are trans people in every single country and every single time period. We are, we're often very special people. Uh, you know, just living and existing is, is so strong. And you don't have to be like in a protest. You don't have to be like out or loud about your identity. Just being who you are and telling your friends and family is enough. <laughs>指名と日本でも参考にしてもらえたらと思います。またこの動画のロングバージョンも近日YouTubeにアップするよってですのでチェックしてみてください。なぜマジョリティはマイノリティのことを考えないといけないのかという質問をしたらいろんな回答があり興味深か